For centuries, the Columbia River's mouth, a turbulent confluence of freshwater and sea, claimed ships and lives, earning the grim nickname Graveyard of the Pacific. Today, that battleground is fortified by a modern marvel, a $250 million 6.5-mile rock wall known as the Mouth of the Columbia River MCR Jetty System. In this video, we'll cover why it was built, how it works, and what it took to tame one of the world's most dangerous river entrances. Let's say you are approaching a river mouth where 40-foot swells crash against steep underwater slopes, shifting sandbars beneath your keel with every storm. That was the reality at the Columbia River for ships in the 1800s. With a drainage basin spanning 259,000 square miles across seven U.S. states and Canada, the river was vital for trade, but deadly to navigate. Thousands of vessels ran aground or sank trying to enter, their wrecks scattered like bones along the shoreline. By the late 19th century, Congress decided enough was enough. The River and Harbor Act of 1882 authorized a jetty system to corral the river's flow and flush sediment into the ocean. Construction of the South Jetty began in 1885. Crews drove timber piles into the seabed, then used steam locomotives and dump cars to deposit giant stones, ultimately creating a 4.5-mile barrier by 1895. The result was immediate. A stable channel formed, sandbars cleared, and wrecks became far less frequent. Yet the ocean is relentless. By the 1930s, winter storms had flattened the original jetty, prompting a massive rebuild that placed 2.3 million tons of rock under three contracts. Over the decades, incremental repairs followed. The North Jetty saw work in 1962 and 2015, and Jetty A, the smaller central spur, in 1962 and 2007. But by the 2010s, the entire system needed a comprehensive overhaul. Enter the MCR Major Rehabilitation Project, a multi-billion dollar commitment by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to rebuild all three jetties. The South Jetty, longest of the three, became the centerpiece. With a six-year timeline and an estimated price tag topping $250 million, this effort is the largest jetty construction project in the nation. Behind every foot of jetty lies a story of quarrying, hauling, and precision placement. Beginning in 2017, Crews at the Beaver Lake Quarry in Mount Vernon, Washington, blasted into granite hills, aiming not for rubble but for massive blocks weighing 5 to 35 tons apiece. A PC-2000 excavator struggled through the shot rock, picking out boulders that met strict size gradations. Each chosen stone was weighed, tagged, and sent on a complex journey, first to on-road trucks, then by barge hundreds of river miles downstream to staging areas near the jetty. Some days, a single stone required a 20-minute truck trip through narrow work zones. At the jetty head, a custom Caterpillar 6020B mining excavator, its boom extended to 90 feet and guided by Trimble GPS, would lift each rock like a surgeon placing vertebrae in a spine. The operator studied the shape and weight of every boulder, rotating and repositioning until it locked perfectly with its neighbors, forming an interlocking armor that the ocean couldn't pry apart. Columbia's winters are brutal. Freezing temperatures, storm surges, and high seas force the project into seasonal work windows. From 2019 through 2024, crews mobilized each spring by barge, transporting the entire fleet to the jetty head, and demobilized every fall to avoid the worst weather. Over five seasons, they reconstructed 6.5 miles of jetty, placing more than 400,000 tons of stone. Pearson Cat and Pierce Pacific worked with J.E. McComas to modify a standard Caterpillar 6020B mining excavator into a specialized rock placement machine. The original mining bucket was replaced with a grab and thumb attachment designed for handling large stones. A custom boom and stick extended the reach to over 90 feet, allowing operators to place boulders weighing up to 40 tons. Integrated Trimble GPS guidance provided real-time positioning data on the operator's console, ensuring each rock was placed according to the Army Corps of Engineers' specifications. The Columbia River supports approximately $24 billion in annual economic activity, including port operations, barge traffic, commercial fishing, and recreational use. Maintaining a stable, navigable channel is essential. Without the jetties, Shifting sandbars and high-energy wave events would make the river mouth impassable during storms, disrupting supply chains and posing safety risks. 
During the final stone placement season in late 2024, representatives from Congress and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers convened on the North Jetty to acknowledge project milestones. The South Jetty reconstruction is scheduled for completion by October 2025, concluding a rehabilitation effort that traces its origins to the original jetty construction of the 1880s. Upon its completion in October 2025, the reconstructed South Jetty will restore the full integrity of the mouth of the Columbia River jetty system, ensuring a consistently deep and stable navigation channel. Commercial vessels, barges, and fishing boats will benefit from reduced dredging requirements and fewer navigational hazards, translating into lower operating costs and more reliable schedules. Recreational boaters in the tourism sector will also experience enhanced safety and predictability, supporting local economies in Astoria, Longview, Portland, and other river communities. By channelizing river flow and minimizing sediment buildup, the jetty will extend the intervals between maintenance dredging, allowing federal and local agencies to allocate resources more efficiently. Beyond immediate operational gains, the completed jetty represents a long-term investment in regional resilience. With climate-driven increases in storm intensity and sea level rise, coastal infrastructure faces mounting challenges. The interlocking rock armor, carefully designed and precisely placed, will resist the most severe wave forces for decades reducing the risk of catastrophic failure during extreme weather events. In turn, this stability safeguards critical supply chains for grain, timber, and other exports that pass through the river, reinforcing the Pacific Northwest's role in global trade. Local industries can plan expansions and investments with greater confidence, knowing that the river's gateway remains secure. As the final stones lock into place, the project not only tames a once formidable natural barrier, but also showcases how advanced machinery, data-driven precision, and human expertise can converge to reshape and protect our built environment.